Hello and welcome to a wee presentation with the Living Memory Association. Today, through photographs and memories, we take you back to a special space that both young and old will remember well. Where the barons played and the washing dried. The much-loved communal back green. Even today, as much as half the housing in Edinburgh and Glasgow is tenement buildings. Some Edinburgh tenements were built as long ago as the 17th century, though in Glasgow most were built later, in the late 19th or early 20th century, to provide housing for the large number of people immigrating to the city from the country to work in the booming Glasgow industries. It must have been a shock to leave behind the wide open spaces of the country for cramped city living, so folk made the most of the small green space at the back of the house even if it was shared with everyone else on the stair. In fact, memories and photos show that the back green of the tenement was a real communal area, especially between and just after the wars, which is when most of our photos today were taken. Here we see four wee children posing as soldiers, standing to attention with their sticks and round brody helmets. We think the two children on the left are Graham and Anos Mooney, who feature in several of the photos we will see today. No doubt, many of you will remember the Bat Green concert where people from the stair would get together to sing, dance, or do some sort of turn. This photo taken in 1958 shows nine lovely girls in the Bat Green, beautifully dressed and performing in almost perfect coordination, almost. 1958 would have been the Queen's fifth coronation anniversary could this rather patriotically themed Bat Green concert be a celebration of this? We can't be sure, but it certainly does seem to be well orchestrated and perhaps celebrating something more than the regular song and dance from the stair. And here's another photo taken on what seems to be the same day. This time, a shot of the enthralled audience lined with the smallest children in front all the way back to the adults sat on chairs no doubt borrowed from sitting rooms and kitchens upstairs. The photographer must have called out as some of the children in the front are looking directly at the camera. As well as the bold fly, you can also see some bunting and paper flower wreaths hanging from what are probably usually the clothing lines. The green was also a frequent setting for family portraits. Perhaps because the lighting was better outside and the space meant you could fit more family in than in the cramped kitchen. Here are a few, but there are many, many more in the Edinburgh Collective Photo Archive. Why not have a browse? You may even see someone you know. This first photo is from 1924 and shows three sisters and a friend in the back garden at 87 Grove Street. The first two are Mary McLaughlin and Kath McLaughlin. And the third woman is a friend named Sutherland. Her first name we don't know. Standing in the front is young Margaret McLaughlin, aged just four. This middle photo shows two sisters and their wee bairns, Mary Smith with her daughter Moira and Janet Valen with her son Brian. Finally, a solo beauty photo the lovely young woman sitting in the deck chair in the back garden is Ruth Dunbar, and the photo was taken rather later than the other two, in 1959, and the back garden is at 39 Northfield Crescent. Many of the photos featuring the back queen and the Wee Museum of Memory are of young children, brothers and sisters or friends, often playing together in the back green. This photo was donated by Betty Anderson and shows her two young sons, William and Alec, on either side, and the young girl in the middle is her daughter, Elizabeth. The photo was taken in 1948, in the green behind 17 Murdoch Terrace, just two doors up. At number 19, there was a wash house, conveniently close for Betty and the other housewaves. Not all good, though. Many years before, the wash house on 19 Murdoch Terrace had been the scene of a murder. Murder on Murdoch Terrace, said the headline. And another group of playmates, this time siblings and neighbours. This photo, taken in 1933, shows a green separated by low wooden fencing rather than the tall stone wall which separated most of the tenement fat greens from one another. Patricia Anderson, who donated this photo, said, 
I don't know any of these children, but the one in the center with her finger in her mouth looks like Marjorie Seaman. The rest are probably neighbors. Does anyone recognize any of the children in this lovely playgroup? Another group of smiling children. Here a little older, and most from either the Barr family or the Campbell family, who were visiting from Glasgow on the day of the photo. Robert Duncan and Agnes Salton, who are both on the front row, must have been neighbors of the Barr family. Annie Watson, the fair-haired girl in the front row, donated the photo, and she remembers, Miller's Sweetie Factory was next to our stair. The workers often threw sweets up to us in the back green, as it was open with railings. Middlemass Biscuit Factory was across the road from where we stayed. It is now a library. Mary Barr cleaned in the biscuit factory. Nelson Printing Work was just up the road from us. Ah, look at this lovely wee poser. Many photos show children in fancy dress playing in the back green. Here, Maisie Grote is dressed in her mother's hat, coat and fox fur. The photo was taken in the back green at 11 Albion Place in Leith. Agnes Old remembers, you'd play in the street all dressed up in your mother's clothes. You thought you were the bee's knees, right enough. You'd be out playing in all weathers too. I do wonder what the mother thought of her daughter wearing the fox coat. Two more costumed children. These two boys, dressed as cowboys, are brothers Robert and James Bishop, who are obvious fans of the American Western, so popular in the 1950s. The photo was taken at their grandparents' home in Louder High Street. The two children in this photo are brother and sister Adam and Euphemia Donaldson from Kirkensney, though known to their family as Adie and Femi. Helen Mustard remembers, I played in the back green of the tenement. The laddies played football and kicked the can and hide and seek and all those things. I think we used to play hopscotch on any bit of concrete we could get a hold of. You used to mark it out and you used to get a small round biscuit tin from McVitie Price that had digestive biscuits. We used that to make the marks. Margaret Lee also remembers that the boys and girls played their own games and had their own spaces. She grew up in Dean Village and she remembers different areas were designated for rafts and swimming. The hedgy area, as it was known by the children, near the falls at the top of Dean Path, was preserved for boys. This photo is Margaret aged three or four in the high green, and just beyond is her old house at the top of Dean Path. Here she is on her way to paddling in the down between the wooden bridge and the ford in front of the Well Court Gardens. Rosie Mento remembers, we were never in. We were always out playing in the street. We were never allowed in. You shouted up to the window, Mommy, I want a piece of jam, or whatever, and she'd throw it out the window in a bit of paper. And of course, the back green was safe enough for even young children to be left alone, as there was always someone around to look after them. This photo shows young Anna Mooney, who is standing with a friend in the back green of Strathfillan Road, Morningside, in 1931. Play is not just for the kids, though. And if it's already called a green, after all, then why not have a round of golf? This image from 1945 shows a man playing golf in the back green, with a puzzled housewife looking entertained but rather protective of her washing, and ready, I'm sure, to keep the golfer swing at a distance from the sheets. More adult sporting fun in the green. Here, four men and a young woman pose with tennis rackets on a very sunny day. Can anyone recognize the sporting equipment that the young woman is holding? If so, get in touch in the comment section below or through our social media pages. It wasn't all fun and games though. Someone had to look after the green. This lovely landscape photo shows two boys hard at work mowing a spacious back green, which we think was somewhere in Comiston. The photo must have been taken from a back window and shows the adjoining green on the other side of the wall. The boy on the right with the broad protective sun hat is possibly Graham Mooney. And another person hard at work. It must have been a lovely warm day as the young woman, Dolly Fiddler, is dressed in short sleeves and a garden penny as she holds the handle of what seems to be a lawnmower. Perhaps something like this. Do you remember hand lawnmowers like this? Perhaps some of you still use them. 
They certainly are quieter, and you are sure to get your exercise for the day. And no reminiscence of the back green is complete without thinking of the washing. This is a wonderfully rare, very old photograph from 1900 of four young children and what must be their mother in the back green on washing day. In the background, you can see the tenement buildings enclosing the green, and the lines are weighted down and tipping back from the weight of the wet, freshly washed clothes as the young family enjoy a sunny day in the green while the washing dries. The photo was donated by the Walker family of Bells Mill, Edinburgh, so perhaps it was taken near the Walker's own home. Alma Lang remembers helping her granny with the washing when she and her sister visited Granny's Prestonfield Road back green as a child. She remembered, I used to visit my granny a lot. I helped her hang out the washing. She was a tiny woman, only about four foot nine. She had to stand on a stool to put up the washing. I used to brush her hair. It was down past her hips. This photo shows Alma with her sister Irene and mum Mary on a visit to their grannies in 1933. Lee Purvis remembers the green being used for playing and drying in Ormiston, where he grew up. He said, we had a big side and front garden, drying green at the back. We played football in the back, drying green or on the road. We lived next door to the school and a witch. The ball always went into the playground or into the witch's garden. I wonder whether families shared the lines or if they had their own. How could you make sure it was your own laundry that was brought in? Does anyone remember? No washing lines are visible in this charming family photo taken in the back green, but evidence of washing day is there in the washing basin, just to the left of young Evelyn Whitfield. The others in the photo are Evelyn's aunt Ellen and Ellen's daughter-in-law Frances. The baby is Frances' daughter, Jacqueline. We, Peter Bottomley, aged just three, wanders in the green on washing day in this photo. His older sister, Jean, explains some do's and don'ts of washing day. She says, washing was always taken in at night and never hung out if there was a wedding or a funeral. The push chair in the photo was probably used to transport the laundry from the local wash house. This photo was taken showing the layout of the washing green and balconies. Steps led down from the walkway down to the greens and onto the road below. And another fine photo from Jean Bottomley. This one taken two years later and showing her sister Marion and their neighbour May posing on Brother Charlie's Royal Infield motorbike. Having done the washing and changed into lovely day dresses, the two look ready for a celebratory ride. You can see the engine revving with smoke as they pose for the picture before taking off. We leave you with a final photo of neighbourhood children in the back green of Albion Place and Albion Road. We've seen some of them already. Stylish Maisie Groats, who was posing in her mother's fox fur coat in an earlier photo, is here in the middle row with her sister Etta. Some of the other children are Gemma Semple, Alice Mackay, Helen Tate, Tommy Bruce, Douglas Scott, Helen Simpson, David Tate, Violet Beveridge, and Rena Archbold. Does anyone remember or recognize the others? If so, as always, we would love to hear from you. Please do get in touch in the comment section below, on our social media pages, or send us an email.